So it finished Everton nil, Arsenal won, and we can all finally stop talking about hoodoos, curses, and leave all the superstitious mumbo jumbo behind in the Middle Ages. This was an accomplished performance by a team that was under a bit of pressure. Man City, after all, winning fairly comfortable at the London Stadium. And Spurs coming from behind to beat uh, Sheffield United team. That mm. So there are some very important talking points. And um, let's start off straight away with the selection. Arteta spoke at the start of the season while still on the pre-season tour of the United States about having an air of unpredictability about the side because if there was a criticism of last year, it was he over relied on a first 11, which by the end of the season, he couldn't do that. We didn't have as many different tactical variations. This season is the polar opposite of that, as we all know. So probably shouldn't have been surprised at some of the changes he made. Now I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about the Ramsdale Raya situation because I've done a separate video on that and there'll be a link to that at the end. But um, certainly the other big one for me was the inclusion of Vieira instead of Havertz. Uh, another huge talking point. In the end, it's kind of funny that the player that everybody was annoyed with last season, Vieira, everyone thought had underachieved, is the person that everybody wanted to see come in for our newest player who hasn't quite hit the ground running. And I think overall you have to say that Vieira played really well. The other talking point that kind of leads on from that is the offside goal. I've had conversations with Man United fans who feel as though we got lucky with Garnacho's offside, which we didn't. He was offside. And so this is kind of justice that we're suffering at the hands of VAR. Now every team is going to suffer a VAR decision this season and hopefully they balance out. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But there are some big differences here. The key thing really is that when Gabriel plays the ball sideways, Beto sticks his foot out and as a result, the ball travels down towards Vieira much more quickly than Enketi was expecting and his trailing leg is somewhat offside. So there's no question that Enketi is offside. Of course, when the goal first went in, I was celebrating like crazy. And then it's that VAR thing, isn't it, where you realise I can't really celebrate because there might be an infringement some minutes beforehand. And as it turned out, that was the case here. Apparently, though, it comes down to the fact that Beto wasn't intentionally kicking the ball. Now, it's still up for debate, isn't it? If you're not intentionally kicking the ball, don't stick your leg out towards it. You would hope that a professional footballer would know that if you fling your foot at a moving ball, it's likely to change the direction of that ball. Certainly, if he doesn't know that, he's going to struggle to score goals up front. But, not trying to be facetious, I think the issue could go either way and in a game as close as this one and as important as this one you do start getting the feeling that it's just not going to go your way that said though Everton really were not the team that beat us last season they did not press anything like as well they were content to stay in their own half and this result if anything was a lot like uh, the game against Leicester after the hurly-burly victory over Aston Villa last season where Martinez helped us by scoring an own goal off a Jorginho shot. Uh, we went away to Leicester and what was really impressive about it was that we'd had a lot of these kind of games where you live on your nerves and it's it's fast-paced and there's lots of action and activity. This game was not that. We took the oxygen out of the game, much like you would expect a Man City side to do put it another way, much as you'd expect champions to do. Vieira had come in for Havertz. That was a fantastic through ball from him. I thought overall Vieira had a good game. I think um, there were a couple of moments where he got in the way. He had shots blazed over. He didn't look in, He didn't look that good in front of goal. But then, you know, it was a good midfield performance from a player who's certainly come on leaps and bounds since last year. It was interesting for me to see Rice playing on the right. Defensive midfield was Zinchenko inverted on the left. I thought they played really well together. We never really looked in a great deal of trouble. And I thought Rice was absolutely outstanding uh, and in control. Passes, really crisp, really clever. And Ketia had a couple of great moments, but ultimately it just wasn't his game. I thought he was really unlucky with that training leg that caused it to be offside. The other thing, of course, was when um, Martinelli, having scored that goal, I think he might have pulled his hamstring actually scoring the goal. 
And um, I've had a look today. There isn't a lot of uh, injury updates in terms of how long we're expecting him to be out for. But if it's a hamstring, you figure a couple of weeks, which is such a shame. I mean, for any player who's done as much as he has to put us in the Champions League to miss the first Champions League game is a terrible shame. When he has to go off... It is good that we have Trossard on there to come on. Uh, I don't know how many of you caught Trossard's beautiful goal against Estonia for Belgium, um, but he is in a hot streak of form. And if Martinelli's injury does keep him out, well, then I suppose one silver lining to that cloud would be that Trossard should get to start more often. And his goal, well, it was a thing of beauty. Now, a lot was made of the fact that we changed up our corners, started a game, we were going for the sort of back stick, whip it in, and then... We changed to a short corner, drawing the defenders out. Look, Everton are perfectly set up to defend in the middle. It's a Sean Dyche team, congested middle, big, powerful centre-backs. I thought Tarkovsky had a good game again. Overall, I don't think they did too badly defensively. They just didn't show anything going forward. And when Trossard strikes that goal beautifully, I don't think I was ever worried that it was going to be anything other than a victory. After the second half, though, I had been a little bit nervous that Arteta hadn't been making the changes. The other big decision he'd made was, of course, Enketia instead of Jesus. Jesus got a great record against Everton. It got to be a surprise that he didn't start him. I think part of this game is an eye to Wednesday's game against PSV. And I think we're in good shape for that game. And more than anything... It's good to come away from a weekend like that, still in the race, joint second, Liverpool with a fantastic second half performance against Wolves. As I mentioned earlier, Sheffield United really looked like they were going to win against Spurs at White Hot at the Tottenham Stadium. And then, well, you know, 10 minutes of extra time. The only other talking point from the game against Everton, actually, and you saw Sean Dyche waving his hands around that there was only four minutes of added time at the end of this game when you could say we probably did slow the game down quite a bit. I was surprised it was only four minutes. But realistically, I think we could have played Everton for another 20 minutes and I don't think it would have changed the result. Everton, to me, looked like a team badly in need of something. Sean Dyche effect has well and truly worn off. You can't sit that deep. You can't. You can't sit that deep at home and, and hope to have the fans on your side. I have nothing but respect for Everton fans, and it is sad when you see them all trooping out near the end. But hopefully the new ownership will go through and they will get some investment. It's funny to think, isn't it, that when Arteta took over and Carlo Ancelotti was at Everton, there was that period before we played Chelsea where it really did look like we should have gone for Ancelotti because Arteta wasn't going to make it. And Everton had splashed the cash and they were looking like they were going to make a mount, mount a challenge for the top four. Well, that's how quickly things change in football. Overall, uh, whilst it's not the exciting football that we all hoped for, it is really important. Man City, five from five. And you tend to look at Man City's fixtures with hope. You know, I honestly thought there might be a bit of banana skin with the, the way that West Ham are playing at the moment. And they, you know, I have to say... On the international break, the other player that looked brilliant as well as Trossard was Doku. And, well, he looks like a real player. And you can kind of understand why they've let Palmer go to Chelsea. Interestingly enough, though, Doku on the left, which I wasn't expecting. It is a Man City team that knows how to grind out results. Looking at their next two fixtures, they've got Nottingham Forest at home and Wolves away. And anything can happen in football. But you have to fancy that by the time we play them on the 8th of October, it's going to be full points for them from the first seven games. So 21 points, hopefully playing 19. We, of course, have Spurs next Sunday. And, well, if I was nervous before the start of the Everton game, but confident, it'd be brilliant if we burst Tottenham's bubble. It's still only the first five games. Statistically not enough to really get an idea of where everyone's going to be. But Liverpool seem back amongst their best form. Liverpool have got an energy about them and a swagger about them. Tottenham obviously riding their emotions. A bit like we did last season. And um, Man City set atop the table. Don't think they've hit their top gear yet either. So, all things considered, a professional 1-0 to the Arsenal. And... Uh, 
well, on Wednesday we get to hear that Champions League music, which I'm really excited about. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Listen, I just want to say a massive thank you to all you subscribers. I, I can't tell you how important it is. Um, 500 subscribers is a real milestone that seemed very far away when I started this channel on the 31st of January, but we're really close. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and click like if you like this video. And as I said, there is a video coming out on the Raya. David, there is a video coming out on the Ramsdale Raya question. And I would love your feedback on that as well. Till I see you again. Be lucky. Lots of love.